Peter Fagas is undeniably the most original of all the adjuncts of coastal defense introduced by the Hospitaller Knights in the Maltese Islands. In essence, the Fagas was a mortar carved out of solid rock designed to fire stone projectiles onto enemy ships approaching the shore. Technically speaking, it is best described as a Fagas Pieria, or Fogatsa Arselchi, a stone throwing for gas. For rather than being simply an explosive mine, which was what a typical for gas was meant to be. The Maltese version used the explosive force to propel projectiles at an enemy target hundreds of meters away. It was designed and perfected for a coastal defense role by the order's resident military engineer Francesco Marandorn. The first prototype was built in 1740, after an earlier failed attempt. The order's records show that Fagasses were still being constructed in 1749. Structurally, the Fagas consisted of a conical, rock-hewn shaft with a small firing chamber at the bottom end, cut into the ground at an angle of 45 degrees. A wooden barrel filled with gunpowder was placed inside the firing chamber. This was attached to a long cord-like fuse, passed through a narrow channel cut in the wall of the Fagas. The gunpowder barrel was then sealed shut with the circular wooden lid, known as a rotor. The shaft was then filled with a large mass of stunt projectiles, and once this operation was completed, the fagas was ready to be fired on vessels entering into its fixed field of fire. Generally, each bay was defended by two fagasses, so located, so as to create a deadly field of fire. However, the larger bays, such as Meliha and Salina, are known to have had as many as four fagasses. The fagas used about a hundred pounds of gunpowder to propel some three tons of stunt projectiles over a distance of about 100 meters to cover an area as large as a football ground. Enemy vessels caught within its field of fire would have been showered with a deadly hail of projectiles. What we know of the Fugas comes largely from Francesco Marandon. Marandon was the order's resident military engineer and the inventor of the Maltese version of the Fugas, the so-called Fogazza Asergi. From Marandon's notes, we learn three important facts about the Fugas. The first concerns the initial failed attempts at introducing the Fugas in the Maltese islands by Marandon's predecessor, the French resident military engineer Charles Francois de Mondion. Secondly, Marandon's papers provide us with a detailed account of his own experiments with Fugas, particularly the test firing of his prototype Fugas on 28 September 1740. Thirdly, Marandon's records reveal the sequence in which Fugases were introduced around the shores of the Maltese Islands over the course of the 1740s. The order appears to have sought to introduce the Fugas as an agent of coastal defense sometime after 1715. Marandon tells us that Mondion had sought unsuccessfully to make use of naturally occurring depressions in the rocky foreshore to serve as firing chambers. These experiments failed, largely because Mondion, to cite Marandon, appears to have had a poor grasp of pyrotechnics. It is not yet clear when the first attempts to introduce the Fagas in Malta first occurred. Historians believe that this took place sometime between 1715 
second year of the arrival of the French military mission in Malta, and 1733, the year of Mondrian's death. Marandon's own experiments with the Fugaz were undertaken in 1740. By this time, Marandon had been serving as the order's resident engineer since 1727, the first six years of which as an assistant to Mondion himself. It is not known what induced Marandon to take up the idea of the Fugaz once again. What we know for sure, however, is that he test fired his first prototype Fugaz on 28 September 1740. This experimental Fugaz was cut out in the rocky foreshore of Valletta, just beneath English curtain below the Auberge de Bavier, strained towards Dragut Point, then still unfortified. Mar and Dawn's experimental for gas was roughly 4 meters deep, some 1.8 meters wide at the mouth and inclined at about an angle of 50 degrees. On the day of its baptism of fire, it was filled with 306 stone projectiles of various sizes, totaling in weight some 3,575 cantara. A charge of 83 rotary of ordinary gunpowder was placed in its chamber, and when fired, this proved powerful enough to propel the heavy mass of stunned projectiles, some 80 meters high into the air, scattering the stones 300 meters away. The effect, in Mar and Dawn's own words, was the rain of stones. Marandon was quite pleased with the effects of his experiment and so was the order. In fact, in the following year, 1741, the order of St. John instructed the engineer to begin the implementation of a program of construction of fugaces around the shores of the Maldives Islands. The first fugaces were begun in 1741 and included amongst many those at Alet Marco, St. George's Bay and St. Julian's. These were followed in 1742 by the 14 fugaces constructed in Gozo. The construction of Fugaces was still underway as late as 1747 and 1749 when Fugaces are known to have been built in Marsa Schlock and along the northern shores of Malta. In all, the total number of Fugaces built in the Maltese Islands was 64, in other words 50 in Malta and 14 in Gozo. Of these, only 12 examples have been identified to date. Seven of these are to be found in Malta, including the first prototype for gas, which was built in Valletta in 1740. Historians have also identified various references in the records to the location of other fagasses which have disappeared over the passage of time. One such example was the Fagas at Resgilian, near Benice, which is shown on a period plan of the fortifications of Marsashlok Bay. There is also a well-documented reference to the Fagases in St. Julian's and St. George's Bays, which were fired experimentally by the British military in 1801. Even so, this still leaves a large balance of the gases, which are still unaccounted for. After the 1740s, 
mention of Fagasis in the Order's records is seldomly encountered. However, this does not mean that this novel weapon had been discarded. On the contrary, the French military engineers who came to Malta during the emergency of 1761, under the command of the Comte de Villemac, carried out experiments with the Fagas and declared it to be well suited for the defense of the coastline. Nicolas Pontleroy, the French military engineer accompanying Bullemac, is recorded as having test fired a Fagas on 15 October 1761. Pontleroy even considered various ideas on how to adapt this weapon for the defense of the glacis of the crown works of the Floriana lines. The next time we read of the Fagasses being prepared for war is in 1792, following the suspicious appearance of the French fleet in the vicinity of Malta. During the Congregation of War meeting of the 5th of November, 1792, orders were issued for the Fagasses to be cleaned, armed, and kept ready for eventual use. On this occasion, the threat soon subsided and the Fagasses were disarmed without being fired in anger. In 1798, however, things turned out differently, and at least one Fagas is recorded to have been fired at Napoleon's French troops as they rode their way to the shores of Marseille. One cannot help but observe how the fundamental uniqueness of the Maltese for gas was quickly noted and copied. Patrick Bryden, whilst visiting Malta in 1770, was amazed at how the Knights had managed to invent this new kind of ordnance unknown to the rest of the world. The British, as a matter of fact, were the first to copy and adapt the weapon for the defense of their own naval stations in the Mediterranean. In 1771, they experimented with the Fagas in Gibraltar. Known as Healy Stone Mortar, the Gibraltar Fagas was nonetheless considerably smaller than the Maltese example, holding only 1,470 small stone projectiles and charged with only 27 pounds of gunpowder. That is, a quarter of the charge of a Maltese Fagas. A more serious use of the Fagas was made by the British military on the island of Menorca where they excavated a formidable double line of 22 Fagasses on the rocky foreshore beneath the fort. These appear to have been actually fired against enemy ships during the Franco-Spanish attack on the island in 1782. In the 19th century, with Malta now under British rule, the Fagasses first became a mere curiosity and then were eventually abandoned. By the 1830s, practically all the coastal fortifications built by the Knights had been decommissioned and handed over to the civil government. Many of the Fugasses were simply filled in with stone and buried. An attempt was made, at the start of World War II, to press a few of the Fagasses into military service in the defense of the island. One popular photograph of the time shows a Fagas at Salina Bay being test-fired in the presence of the Governor-General, Sir William Dobby. There is little doubt today that the Fagas represents one of the most original elements of coastal defense and fortification introduced by the Knights of St. John in Malta. A truly unique invention. For further reading, please go to militaryarchitecture.com.
Militaryarchitecture.com is a non-profit making and educational initiative aimed at disseminating an appreciation and understanding of the art and science of military architecture and fortress building.